Welcome back. Super excited. Moving forward, I'm going to talk about the cross-region replication for S3 bucket. So I'm just going to demonstrate with this simple example. And it's important because the region that you're working in, for instance, right now, I'm working within the North Virginia region. You notice within the drop-down list, I have several other regions listed. So by default, I've selected or I've been working with the U.S. East, North Virginia. So AWS instances and buckets work with this particular region. What if I have another region and I have instances, I have S3 buckets in a different region, for instance. So how do I make sure that everything is replicated within the S3 buckets? Because remember, S3 buckets are global, right? And virtually unlimited space that you can have within the S3 buckets. And you can store objects, you can store images, you can store data, any kind of information within the S3 bucket. So in this instance, I only have, at this point, I'm working with the U.S. East Virginia region. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to create our S3 buckets, how to configure the versioning, and then eventually demonstrate the replication of data from one S3 bucket in one region to another S3 bucket in a different region. Now, note that this could also apply to different accounts. So right now I'm using the Cladesk eLearning account. You have a different account in a different region, equally applicable. Perfect. So let's jump right in. Let's go ahead and take a look at our S3 buckets. If not, then we're going to go ahead and create one. So you need two things, right? We need the source S3 bucket, which is this region, North Virginia. And then we'll go ahead and change the region and create a destination S3 bucket. And then we'll configure the replication of objects that we will place. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on services. So what you will need to do is navigate to the storage section and then simply click on S3. And this will take you to the S3 management console page. And at this point in time, there are zero buckets in zero regions. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly create a bucket. So click on the plus sign. And a few steps, just name and region, configure the options, set the permissions, and then review before you can actually create the bucket itself. So here's the bucket name. I'm going to go ahead and just give it a name. I'm gonna call it. So this is the name of the bucket within this region, which is US East North Virginia. I could also copy settings from an existing bucket, but since I do not have one, so I'm just gonna create a new bucket with this particular name. Click next. Here's the important part. Here's the versioning. So make sure this option is checked where it says keep all versions of an object in the same bucket. And it's important to note that, let's say you already have a bunch of objects within a bucket and you create or enable versioning later on, right? So keep in mind that versioning or replication will only affect those objects that are created after you set these or configure these options. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on versioning which is make sure that keep all versions of an object in the same bucket. I can also log requests for access to your bucket that I'm gonna take a look at later on throughout this course you learn. But right now, I'm just gonna demonstrate versioning and replicate. You can also tag to track project costs, need be. And I can also choose object level logging, okay? But for right now, I'm just gonna keep versioning, click next. There are other options too, by the way, if I scroll down, just so that you know that under advanced settings, I can lock an object, so it'll allow me to permanently lock objects in the bucket, or, and I can also use the management and use AWS CloudWatch, where I can create billing alerts or alerts and notifications, right? And other metrics that I can work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply click next. Third is set the permissions. So we can grant the permissions to specific users after you create the bucket. Right now it's public access settings for this bucket. So here by default, notice all of these four checkboxes are checked. In other words, manage public access control list for this particular bucket and manage public bucket policies for this bucket as well. If I scroll down, I can manage system permissions. At this point, do not grant Amazon S3 log delivery group right access to this bucket, or I can choose the other two, one of the other two options as well. So I'm going to leave this to as do not grant Amazon S3 log 
All right, so I'm going to set this as default, leave this as it is in the permissions area, click next. And here I can simply scroll up and down all the way to review the settings. So here's my bucket name, the region, and then the versioning is enabled. Okay, so that's all we really did in this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create bucket. And this is going to go ahead and create the bucket for me. So I have one bucket and one region, which is at this point global because if I click on the global option here on the menu, S3 does not require region selection. So all we're configuring is the replication from one region to the other. So once I have the bucket created, let's go ahead and create another bucket. And this time I'm gonna change the region first and then create the bucket. So let's navigate to the AWS Management Console homepage. I'm back to my North Virginia. I'm gonna scroll down and change my region. So let's pick any one of these. I'm going to go ahead and select, let's say, Canada, which is a different region, central. So if I click on the Canada central region, I'll be navigated to that particular management console page. So now I'm working with the central region. So within the central region, I'm going to go ahead and go to services, go to your storage, click on S3, and I'm going to go ahead and create another S3 bucket. So let's go ahead and click on create bucket. Give it a name, destination. And notice the region here is important because this is the region that I'm actually creating the bucket in, which is Canada and the central region. So even though the buckets are global, but I could create in any region. Now I did take the longer route, right? I just wanted to show you the fact that you can, even though you change the region, but global is gonna show you for S3, no matter where you are. So if you are searching for a different region and you're thinking, wow, wait a minute here, why is my region not showing? So I just wanted to walk you through in, in the series of steps. Otherwise, it's fairly a shortcut method is just go ahead and create the S3 buckets and select the region during creation, okay? All right, so I'm gonna make sure that I have Canada here. Click next. And of course, the versioning needs to be enabled in this bucket. Basically, you're just copying the same step as you did when you created the first bucket. Click next, and then one more time, and then create bucket, okay? And this is going to go ahead and create the destination bucket for you. Now you have two buckets in two regions. And this is important because now here you can see that you have two regions. And you have two buckets. However, if I click on the global option or the menu here, you will still see the S3 does not require region selection. Okay. So I just wanted to walk you through a little bit slower pace so you understand exactly how the S3 and versioning would work. But once you get experience, all you would do is just go to S3 and create a bunch of buckets in different regions. Okay, so that's straightforward. Great. So once you have these two buckets created, source and destination, I'm going to navigate to my source first, which is in US East North Virginia, and the destination is in Canada Central. So let's go ahead and navigate first to the source and place an object into the source bucket. So let's go ahead and open this bucket. Bucket is currently empty. I'm going to go ahead and upload something to it. So what you need to do next, of course, is to go ahead and upload an image or a document or anything that you wish to be replicated. So I'm going to go ahead and click on upload, and this brings up the dialog box. Again, a series of four simple steps. Let's go ahead and click Add Files. Brings up your Windows Explorer. I'm going to pick any one of these, I guess. How about this logo? that I wish to replicate from one region to the other. So we'll just select the logo, click open, and then click next. The second step, of course, is to manage the users. Or at this point in time, the owner for this bucket is SHA, which is myself. And then the object read-write permissions and the object permissions also read-write are enabled. I can also access for other AWS account. I can add another account. In other words, that account will also be one of the owners or managers for this bucket as well. And then manage public permissions. Do not grant public read access to these objects as recommended. I can also have or select other options as well, such as grant public read access to this object, which means if I choose this option, if I click on this, you'll notice AWS kind of gives me a little warning, right? 
this object has public read access, everyone in the world will have read access to this object. So it's definitely not recommended. So let's stick to do not grant read access to the public, right? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Set the permissions. So this is the standard storage class. It's designed for frequently accessed data. And then it's either equal to or greater than three availability zones and so on. Otherwise, I can also choose other options as well. So I can scroll down and there are a bunch of options. The encryption is kind of nice because it gives you an added security. For instance, I can use the protect data at rest by using S3 master key or by AWS KMS master key. KMS is, is encryption based, which kind of uh, works with cloud trail and it logs all the keys. So it's just a, an added level of security that you can use, or you can use the standard S3 master key as well. And then you can tag and provide the values of metadata. So I'm gonna to stick to the standard permission, click next. Just set the properties and then eventually do the upload. And this is gonna go ahead and start the upload process and upload the image for me in this source bucket, which is US East North Virginia. Great, now once I have object or objects, right, in the bucket here, for demonstration purposes, just one image. Notice on the tab up on top, there's a tab called management. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on management and there's a button called replication. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on replication. And at this point it says, I've not configured or created any cross region replication rules for this bucket. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on add a rule. This brings up a dialog box, a couple of options here. I can either choose or select the entire bucket, which is by default it is selected. And it shows the name of the bucket. Or I can prefix or tags. So it depends if I choose prefix or tag, for example, then I need to type or add the prefix or tag filter. So I don't need to worry about replicating the entire bucket. I can only replicate objects that start with a certain uh, prefixes, okay? Maybe I have uh, HR department files that are like to replicate only. So all of my files that relate to or belong to the human resources department will have the prefix HR, right? So if I type HR, then all of the objects within the S3 bucket will be replicated. Great, so let's stick to the entire bucket. I can of course replicate objects encrypted, like I mentioned earlier with AWS KMS. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. It asks me for the destination bucket, right? Great, and of course we know that our destination bucket is the Canada free destination, which is region Canada Central. Shows me in the list, right? Because I already have it created. If I'm using a bucket in another account, then I can simply choose this option and the account ID, bucket name, and I'm good to go. So I'm gonna click on or choose the bucket in this account and select Canada free destination. And once I select the destination bucket, it says Amazon S3 cannot detect whether versioning is enabled on the destination bucket. Just a warning, even though we know that we have enabled versioning, but we'll verify that ourselves and validate that as well. But it, it's a nice warning, okay? So because you need to have version on both buckets enabled before you can actually start the replication process. A couple of other options is change the storage class for the replicated objects or change object ownership to destination bucket owner. So if I select this option, then this means that the ownership will transfer from one to the other. Since I'm the owner of both buckets, therefore grayed out at this point. But if there was an option where you were doing it in a different region, for example, or different account, then you could set these options. So simply select the destination bucket or choose that bucket, click next. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new role, even though you could choose an existing role, but just for quick demonstration and following along, right on the fly, AWS provides you the ability to create a new IAM role. So let's go ahead and click on select a role here and simply choose create a new role. I'm gonna go ahead and type a name for this. I'm gonna say S3 role, right? Or 
scroll replication. Status is enabled, click next. And then once I'm satisfied with all of these options, I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. And this is going to add the replication rule and give me a message. Congratulations, like cross region replication updated successfully and gives me the detail as well. So now I have a source bucket, which is Virginia S3 source, and a destination bucket, Canada S3 destination, in two different regions. And here are the permission sets. If I scroll down, here are the rule, the S3 role replication, which is the entire bucket, that's the scope, storage class, the replicated object owner, the KMS third objects, and the status is enabled. So it gives you an idea of how easy it is to configure and set up your cross-region replication of different objects. So note that even though we have configured successfully the cross-region replication, what about that image that we had in the source? Was that to be replicated? Think about it. And the answer is not at this point because we uploaded the document first and later on successfully configured the replication, right? So remember the initial part of the lecture that we need to have this configured in the first instance before adding objects to be replicated. So if I were to let's navigate to my S3 buckets here, I'm going to quickly show you this. And then go to my Canada S3 destination, you'll notice this bucket is empty because Canada has not received the replicated image at this point in time because the image was uploaded before we configured the replication. So let's go back to our Amazon S3, go to our source, and now if I add a new image, that should be replicated. Let's go ahead and quickly take a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Upload, Add Files, and this time I'm going to choose, let's say, All Excel File. And this is again an Excel file. So I'm going to click Open. Click next and just simply continue on. I'm going to navigate fairly quickly because we've been doing this and upload. So, as soon as I upload within my Virginia 3 source, which is the source bucket in the US East region, and this is now being uploaded and has been uploaded rather, let's navigate to our S3 again. Click on the Canada S3 destination. Let's go ahead and refresh, and perfect. So congratulations. You have now successfully configured the cross-region replication between two different regions in the AWS ecosystem. So as a homework, go ahead, try it with two different accounts. So if you're able to create another account for AWS, perfect. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, post them in the discussion area. We'll be glad to answer. And with this, let's move to the next lesson.